Today's talk story features a recent After Dark in the Park with Ben Gaddis, a longtime HVO volunteer. I work in the photo archives there, and part of my job is to sort and label old unidentified photographs from the collection. Around a year ago, Gaddis began work on a collection of photos of the 1924 eruption of Kilauea, the most violent eruption of the 20th century. It was the subject of his lecture. This particular photo is by Tysing Lu, and it's probably the best known image of the eruption of 1924. It seems to show happy tourists viewing an eruption cloud from a safe distance, but this conveys a false impression of what was going on. Most people that lived in the area affected were shocked and they were afraid. Nothing like this had happened within the recollection of people living at the time. Gaddis went into detail about the series of explosions from the perspective of the people who lived through it. Suffice to say that the collapse and explosions at Halemaumau continued and gradually increased in intensity. On the evening of May 16th, Bowles was again watching the eruption. Suddenly the entire crater turned a livid red. He described white hot boulders trailing hot sparks sailing straight up out of the pit for a distance of 3,000 feet like skyrockets. After a few seconds flashes of lightning began to play back and forth in the column uh, of dust with thunder that reverberated against the walls of the caldera. Five carloads of tourists were at Uvikuna, including Antoinette Peck, she described thousands of very colored lights which broke from the eruption cloud and gave the appearance of a million skyrockets. At the end of the lecture, Gaddis took questions from the audience. Many wanted to know how a similar eruption today would affect life on the island. The public was especially interested in knowing about possible impacts to Hawaii's electrical infrastructure. Uh, the question was what kind of electrical activity uh, was causing all of these things to go on in 1924. And if something like this happened today, what would be the effect? Uh, well, I'll start with uh, what was going on in 1924. There were a couple of things going on, and Tim's here too, Tim can set me straight. Uh, one was there were these huge lightning storms. You know, the, the, the uh, eruption created just uh, terrific thunderstorms. So lightning was striking all over the place. But the other thing that was going on was static electricity, the dust in the air, and I don't know what the physics of it are, I'm not a scientist, but created static electricity. So when you touched a car, you got a shock. And uh, what blew out the fuses at the Volcano House? I don't think anyone really knows. Would it interrupt your Wi-Fi? That's the most important Would it interrupt your Wi-Fi? I don't have a clue. My Wi-Fi isn't working right now anyway. Uh, you know, electrical uh, impulses are not going to be on your mind if something like this occurred. One thing that I didn't mention is probably the most deadly form of uh, eruptive activity is pyroclastic surges. And that happened in 1790. It apparently did not happen in 1924. Had it happened, Truman Taylor would have died instantly. Uh, because these surges are absolutely lethal. And uh, that's probably the biggest single thing uh, to worry about, although there'd be a lot of worries if this was going on. Gaddis asked him to explain to the audience what a pyroclastic surge is exactly and what makes it so deadly. Swanson had seen the destruction of such a surge when Mount St. Helens blew in 1980. The, the question was, what is a pyroclastic surge? And a pyroclastic surge is a mixture of hot air, hot volcanic gas, and hot rock particles that moves across the ground surface at hurricane velocities. You can't escape a pyroclastic surge if you're caught in one. Uh, you will succumb because you, you are trying to breathe in this hot mixture and this will cook your, your breathing apparatus. You can find the direct link to the full lecture on our website, BigIslandVideoNews.com.